So today we will be discussing about the quantification of fractals. We all have uh, already understood what uh, the uh, the fractals are and uh, how can we create fractals uh, using iterated function systems in our earlier lectures. Now today we are going to see fractals are and we I'll give you an example from the Hindu Upanishads and I'll just uh, read this text from the Upanishad which uh, we have taken. It says that this universe is like a ripe fruit appearing from the activity of the Sat. Sat in Hindu mythology is basically the consciousness. Uh, the, and they say that there is a branch of a tree. Uh, where, you see, they are talking about universe is like a ripe fruit. And then there is a branch of a tree bearing a number of such fruits. Then there is a tree having thousands of such branches. There is a forest with thousands of such trees. So you see, if you imagine, keep on imagining this, you can see how our universe is a very small thing. And then it's going on. Then it's they say it's a mountainous territory having thousands of such forests. Then there is a solar system having these forests. And it comes back to there is a universe containing thousands of such solar systems. So with this universe, we go back to this universe. So we come back to our own copies. So that's what fractals are. So it's just like within an atom within an atom. And ultimately, this whole thing is known as the Sat. Uh, this is or the truth or the consciousness. Uh, so it's not only Hindu mythology that people talk about uh, fractality uh, of the nature of the thing. Also, I saw in the Islamic literature, it's, it's a painting from the, it's a 1583 Ottoman illustration. It uh, describes the sacrifice of Ismail uh, and, and it says the scene of Abraham in the furnace. Uh, and you see the similarity between the Mandelbrot set, part of the Mandelbrot set and the picture here depicted here. Similarly, in the Buddhist uh, uh, literature, or you see the meditating Buddha here. And a rotated Mandelbrot set looks almost exactly like a meditating Buddha. Uh, we, we in, in a lot of religious texture, people have been realizing earlier that yes, there is some sort of fractality in all things. Okay, coming back to the academic things. And now, we are trying to introduce here two ways to quantify a fractal. So first of all, we will see that if we measure any shape in the wrong dimension, that means suppose uh, we have a measure, we have a scale, we try to measure with this scale, try to measure something which is not of the same dimension, then it will give us wrong results. For example, we say if, uh, if we measure in a dimension lower than the actual dimension of the thing, then I will get a result as infinite. Why? See, if I have a filled in a square, it will have infinite length. Uh, if, if you, uh, I can just make you understand with this, if I can draw a bad looking square. I want to measure the length of this square. Uh, not length, I'm not talking about area. The length of this square would be uh, infinite number of lines here. You have so many lines. And if you want to fill this square completely, the total length of the square would be infinite. I'll just erase this thing and uh, come back to this uh, highlighter laser pointer. Uh, similarly, if you measure in a dimension too high, that will give me zero result. A, a, a volume of a field in a square will have zero value because it does not have any volume. For a field in a square, only area makes sense because area is a 2D measure, a square is a 2D object. So to measure something, the, the dimensionality of the object and the scale should match. So now coming back to the Koch curve, if you remember, we were discussing Koch curve in some of the previous lecture, that it has infinite length, which is a one dimensional measure and zero area, which is a 2D measure. That means Koch curve has more than 1D measure. It, it is a more than 1D object and it is a less than 2D object. So it has a dimension of the Koch curve will lie somewhere between one and two. Now that bothers everybody. We are not used to thinking about dimensions, fractional dimension, like 
can it can something be 1.2 dimension what does that mean well so that's what we will try to see particular thing first of all we'll see how to measure things and how are the ineffective ways to measure so if you want to measure the length of a curve, see we always approximate the curve by straight line segments or suppose you have a scale of this size, so you will approximate it, okay, this, this is so much of length, but this is not the true length, the length is actually more than that. If you have a scale of half of its size, let's say from up to here only, then I can measure it this way. I will put the scale here and I will put the scale here. Now this is a better measure than that. So you see as the length of the scale is decreasing, the number of segments are increasing and we are getting better and better measure of length. So let us see, let us take an example of the circumference of a circle, which is a, of course a length. We now know how to measure the length of a straight line. Now for a smooth curve, we can try to measure the length of the curve by approximation and approximation with the straight line segments. Now if we use the length segments of length D, suppose n number of segments are needed to approximate the curve then the total length would be n times d very simple so if, if i say uh, i'll just, just see wait for this animation to load here and i'll see if there is a polygonal approximation with 3 to 20 sides i don't know why it is not working probably it is loading here but if, if, if we have a triangle, then if, if we have only three sides of a polygon, I'll have this kind of curve. If I have four sides, then I'll have this kind of curve. And you see, as the number of sides are increasing, you will get a better and better approximation. So this is the number of sides, uh, the graph of the length of the polygons approximating a circle for 20 through 100 sides. If I have 20 sides, this is the length. And if it's, mind you, this is the radius one. So it will be somewhere around 2 pi. So it is uh, about 2 pi and approximately it is measuring that. Now let's see and we will try the same approach to compute the length of the Koch curve and see what how does it come out. So first of all we have length 1. So we approximate the Koch curve by the straight line segment between the endpoints. Now let's call this as L0. And we say, okay, this is one meter or one centimeter or one inch, doesn't really matter. Unity. So whatever it is, the length of the curve is, we can easily see it is greater than one. It's not one, it's greater than one. Now, if we divide this in three parts, uh, let's see, not three parts, but we take the scale, uh, the measuring scale as one third of the original length. Now I can put this, I can put this here, here, I can try to measure the length. Now it has four such segments are required so the collection of these segments will be the length l1 would be 4 by 3 but we still see the length of the cock curve is more than 4 by 3 now next we continue we reduce it to 1 by 9 of its original size of the scale and we see we need 16 such lines to approximate this curve but we still can see that taken all those together the length l2 will have 16 by 9 which is 4 by 3 square but the total length is still more than that so whatever level you go I say that total length at the nth level will be 4 by 3 to the power n and my length of the cock curve will be for more than 4 by 3 to the power n even if n goes to infinity and this length of the segment goes to almost to 0 I will still have more than this length that's why I'm saying the length of the Koch curve will be infinity. So it is, Koch curve will have infinite length. In fact, not only uh, Koch curve, but each part of the Koch curve, length of the any pair of points within the Koch curve will be infinite. So that's a very, very interesting stuff. Just to give you a realistic example for that, uh, I'll just tell you, that if I length of the if, if the original length is one meter, then the at the 24th level, the total length of the curve is the one kilometer. Within that one meter uh, length, I'll have Koch curve as one kilometer long. If you go to the 128th level, 
then the total length of this curve will be one light year only at 128th level so you can imagine and the total uh, extent of the cock curve will still be one meter it is in one meter but the total length will be one light year so very very interesting now if you look at the area of the cock curve i would have to say you know area would be a 2d measure so i'm trying to do the same thing and let's say we cover the cock curve with a single triangle a filled in triangle the triangle is a 2d measure so let's say 2d this triangle has base length and altitude as under root 3 by 6 just by Pythagorean theorem and I will say the area of this curve which is a 2d measure is under root 3 by 12 but the area of the cock curve we can easily see this part is blank this part is blank this part is blank is less than this area now we divide that in 1 by 3 part so we shrunk the base by 1 by 3 and altitude by 1 by 3 so the area of each triangle will be 1 by 9 of the original area so the we need four such triangles to cover the cock curve so the area total area of these four triangles would be under root 3 by 12 into 4 by 9 because each length is 9 and it is 4 by 9 so it goes the same way as we were dealing with the length only thing is now we are saying here the whatever this area is which is you can see this constantly decreasing but area of the cock curve is less than that particular thing number so area of a triangle is this l1 a0 is this and each time it is at the nth level it will be under 3 by 12 4 by 9 to the power n so the denominator you are saying is the much larger than the numerator that is why the a this a n is continuously decreasing and the area of my cock curve is always less than each a n so ultimately it has the zero area so the length of the cock curve gives infinity and trying to measure the area of the cock curve gives zero so it's not a useful result at all now so we have to measure the dimension of the cock curve by some other measure we'll see the same we'll keep the same logic but uh, it will be some idea which is called a box counting dimension what we will do we'll cover this cock curve by boxes different size of boxes so we have tried with line segments of triangle we could cover it with squares no problem so I can have one square of this size length L or three squares of uh, length 1 by 3 each or uh, 1 by 2 3 6 9 and 12 such squares of length 1 by uh, 9 of the size and so on so each smaller squares will pick up more and more detail of the cock curve you will all agree and it will give you a better approximation of the curve Suppose we need n such squares of side length r. This is the side length r and n such squares. So n into r and r, n will be a function of r of course. So n r into r will approximate the length of the curve, right? L will be n times the length. And n into r square will approximate the area of the curve. So both the things we can find out using such a square. So for several examples, we'll see the pattern of how n behaves with r how n is a function of course is a function of r but how does it change with r so that should tell us something about the how much complex is the shape in this slide this is one one by one and you see one dimensional measure gives me one by r to the power one a 2d object gives me one by r to the power two and obviously you can always guess that a 3d object will give me an object an r equal one by r to the power cubed three that's right so if i get something some sort of this relation with for the cock curve then that power whatever power is there that will be my dimension so more for more complicated shapes the relation between n r and r may be a power law which is k which is a constant here k is one is k times one over r to the power d where d is the dimension of that particular object a square is 2d line is 1d while cube is 3d and so, so what is the definition of box counting dimension for we need the smallest number so for different side lengths we count an r which is the smallest number of boxes of side length r needed to cover the shape and how does this nr depend on r we already saw if the shape is 1d nr is 1 by r 
shape is 2D and R is 1 by R square. Shape is 3D and R is 1 by R cubed. For more complicated shapes, the relation between N, R and R may not be so clear. So it will be something like K into 1 over R to the power D, which is a power relation. How do we find D? We take log of this equation of both sides. So we get log of N, R is equals to log of K plus log of 1 over R to the power D and D comes here. So D log 1 upon R plus log K. Now if you look at this equation, log N, R is D log 1 upon R plus log K. So it's sort of a, okay, I'll come back to that. Uh, just think about it. What what does this, uh, this, this looks uh, something like, uh, if I have a pen here, it is uh, something like y equals m x plus c, where m is the slope and uh, where m is the slope, x is the uh, independent variable and c is the, uh, the section cut on the y-axis and with this thing. So I'll erase that thing. And come back to our highlighter again. Okay, so with the expectation we expect, what do we expect? That as r becomes a smaller and a smaller, we get better and better approximation of the. So if we solve for d and taking the limit as r tends to 0, so r is 0, as r tends to 0, d will be limit r tends to 0 log n r upon log 1 upon r. That's the de de definition of the dimension db, I'm calling db because it's box counting dimension. Why does it reduce to that? Because at r goes to 0, we have 1 over r tends to infinity and log 1 upon r goes to infinity. So therefore, log k upon log r, the second part of the portion will become 0. So if this limit exists, then it is called the box counting dimension db. So that's what we'll be doing for the fractal uh, shapes. Now, come back to that thing. So we can find out dimension by either by this method or another approach would be to note that this is a equation of a straight line y equals the slope into the uh, dependent variable segment so is the equation of a straight line with slope and the intercept log k so if we plot a log n r versus log 1 upon r it should plot as a straight line and the slope of the line should give me the dimension that's a very very simple method of doing that so okay now everybody's uh, knows about the Sierpinski's gasket. So suppose there is a Sierpinski's gasket and what is the dimension of the Sierpinski's gasket? We have created the gasket so many times now in our earlier uh, classes. Uh, now we'll see that if we cover the gasket with the smaller and smaller boxes, we see the, a pattern uh, which is illustrated in the table in the uh, right here, which is in this table. Uh, you, you see a pattern here, right here. So we cover with one box and one is one. We cover with half of the size of the boxes and one half is three because this portion is missing in the separate gasket. I don't need this sub square. So I only need three squares to, to totally cover this particular shape. Similarly, if you further reduce that one by four of the original size, then I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine such squares. So, and 1 by 4 is 9, which is 3 square, and 1 by 8 is 3 cube. So, in general, n 1 by 2 to the power n is 3 to the power n. So, that's the relationship I'm getting. Or, you can directly plot them with the, putting the coordinates there. So, that's the, that's the, that's the, that is, this is the first method, and this is the second method where I can draw a straight line with, on a log log scale and find out the Dimension of the cocker, sorry, no, dimension of the Sierpinski's gasket is 1.59. Coming to the dimension of the cock curve, similar things we can always create. There, n by 1 by 3 is 3, and 1 by 9 is 12, and 1 by 27 is 48 such squares we will need, and so on. So, in general, we find a relation n 1 by 3 to the power n is 3 into 4 to the power n minus 1 as you see the pattern here and similarly I can plot the uh, the coordinates also and I can 
straight line here and the dimension comes out to be 1.26 which is the slope of this particular straight line which is a curve between log nRn versus log 1 over Rn. So the box counting dimension of the curve is about 1.26 and we will try to see if it also comes out from, out from the mathematical formula. So db here is again log Rn tends to 0 the size of the scale tending to 0 log n upon log 1 upon r or which is means n tending to infinity of the same thing and I'll put the these things because I scale them r as 1 by 3 each time so 1 by 3 to the power n log 1 upon 1 upon 3 so this log 3 to the power n this is log 3 into 4 to the power n minus 1 which from this relationship and I can play with this n minus 1 log 4 plus log 3 and log 3 and log 4 minus and log 4 and ultimately you will find that it comes out to be log 4 upon log 3 which is 1.26186 1.26186 that's the same thing so the Koch curve dimension is about 1.26 so the Koch curve is a 1 a point 1 and a 1 quarter of a dimension object Srpinski's grad is about a little more than one and a half dimension of the object uh, if you remember the Cantor set, Cantor set was a, it's a scantily distributed uh, uh, set of points, uh, if you remember, and we generated the Cantor middle third set by the IFS, where the, the first transformation is reducing everything by one third, second transformation is putting the same thing and by shifting two third of the original size. So that will give me a Cantor set, and when I do it repeatedly, that will give me a complete Cantor set. So we use the box side of length uh, thing and this is the Cantor set. Here is this one box, uh, one third of the size, two boxes needed, one ninth of the side, four boxes needed and so on, one twenty seventh of the size, eight boxes are needed. So now it becomes one by law n, one by three to the power n is two to the power n. So the pattern is very simple. So we can find easily uh, directly to the formula and it comes out to be n log 2 upon n log 3 which is it's less than one dimensional object. No uh, surprises here. See this is a scantily distributed space set of points. So it's not even a single line. It's less than one dimension and that's what comes out from the mathematics also. It is 0 0.62989. Now I think I can skip this one. Uh, no. So what does happen when we measure an object in wrong dimension? We knew that the curve between n into r to the power d, where d is the dimension of the object, versus n, uh, n is the power of that, the, the scaling factor. So we, 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 for the Koch curve, if we see, the dimension lies between 1 and 2. So if we measure the length of the shape by n r n r n as n tending to infinity measure the area as n r n into r n square as n tends to infinity so if you want to measure a shape in dimension d we should see that d is 1 here d is 2 here for the area now what is the true dimension we might expect to use n r n into r n to the power d as tends to infinity similarly what happened in one and two dimensional case so these are the graphs using the Koch curve data for different values of d so, and the graph is between n r n to the power d versus small n. So, if d is 1, it goes to infinity. If d is 0 to 2, it goes to 0. So, so, see, as we increase the number of d, the, the value of d, d becomes 1.1, it goes here, take 1.2, and d equals to 1.26 will come out to be a straight line. That means you will just measure it accurately with d when d is 1.26 so this is also another check uh, on